Hey guys, welcome to another lesson here at THSS Technology. Today we're going to be doing an introductory lesson to RPG Maker VX Ace. So let's get started. Uh, now in class we went over that uh, it's very important that you make sure you create your project uh, for RPG Maker in your tech drive folder. So when you're going up to file and new project there, you are putting it in your tech drive folder. Don't forget that, otherwise it will be gone the next time you try to log in. Okay, so let's spend a minute just talking about the basic interface of RPG Maker, then we'll actually get started on our first map. So up at the top here, uh, we have our menu bars, file, edit, mode, draw, scale, tools, game, and help. Right, but just below that, we have all of our toolbars. Now over the next couple of weeks, we're going to be talking about what a lot of these different buttons do. Uh, but, but today, we're really only going to be focusing around these drawing tools here. Excellent. Okay, in the left-hand side of the screen, we have our tiles. Now, RPG Maker works on a tile set system. You're going to be designing your maps using these tiles. We have a tab A and we have a tab B. And uh, in another lesson, we're going to talk about how to add new tabs and new tiles. But for today, we're going to be working with tab A and tab B. And as you can see, they have different objects in them. Down here in the bottom left, uh, we have our map panel. Now in the map panel, it's very similar to the layers panel in Photoshop, you're going to have a list of all your maps, their names, their sizes, their properties, and so forth. So it's important to keep that map panel organized with proper naming structure. As you can see here, the default map names are pretty terrible. We're going to do a lesson in the future about how to name your maps better. But um, down here in the map panels, we're going to see all your maps that you're going to be creating. And then in the central window, we have our game window here. This is what our game is currently looking like. There is not much going on. There's a very large ocean and uh, there's nowhere really where for our player, our character to move around. So let's design a very simple map. Now map design is very important whenever you're making a video game because um, if you design your map properly, it'll actually do a lot of the work for you. It'll help tell your story. It'll help navigate and guide the player and give them an idea of where they need to go. Just through the map design, so you're not always having to directly tell the player where and what they need to do. So I'm going to start by selecting the tile. I'm going to select this grass tile here. Now up here at the top, uh, you notice I have the pencil tool selected. And how the pencil tool works is when you select a tile, you can just click and place different tiles or you can hold down left click and just kind of paint. Excellent, that makes sense. Let's control Z back. Now let's talk about the square tool, the rectangle tool here. So same thing, select your tile, rectangle tool, and then you can just click and drag your shape. And the ellipse tool works about the same. And then we have the paint bucket fill tool if you want to fill the entire pane. And this is a shadow pen that allows you to draw shadows. That'll be a lesson for another day. Uh, I spend most of my time with the pencil tool, but occasionally I do use the rectangle tool when I want to fill in a larger area or make sure I'm drawing perfectly straight lines. Okay, so now uh, let's go to the pencil tool. Let's go to our land tool here, and let's start to draw out like uh, some land masses here. All right, that's looking pretty good. Make sure it's not too boxy. You want a bit more of an organic shape. And... It's looking pretty good. We're going to create two separate continents here, slightly different sizes. A uh, really handy tool is if you, you notice there's no erase button and you just kind of cover it up. But let's say I wanted to uh, draw more grass. Instead of going all the way over here and clicking, you can actually just right click and it copies it. And then you can left click to place. That's pretty neat. So if I wanted to get rid of some of this, I can right click on the water. And then I can delete some of the land that way. Actually, we'll delete a little bit more of that there. That looks a bit better. Okay, good. Um, actually, one more. Once I've kind of drawn the basic outline of my world, uh, I'm going to start by adding some biomes. Let's add a frozen biome up here in the north. All right, that looks good. And then uh, we'll do uh, we'll do like a desert biome down here in the south of the other continent. And then what RPG wouldn't be complete without like a lava zone, another little biome over here that our players will have to explore. Okay, now that we've drawn just four distinct biomes, we can start adding a little bit of decoration. So I'm actually gonna make a path. No, I don't like that path. Make a path kind of down here like that. Uh, and I'm gonna add a big uh, evergreen forest here. 
And we'll actually continue that evergreen forest up into the snowy north with some snow covered trees. Excellent. And then actually we'll put like a more traditional style forest over here. I don't like that. Let's go back to that. Good. Um, maybe put some like a, a dead tree forest over there into the desert forest down here. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Uh, you could decorate the water a little bit, put some like, you know, whatever those are in there. We could do some snow covered peaks up there in the mountains. Oh, let's not forget about the lava, the ever important lava over there. All right, that is looking pretty good. Maybe some kind of whirlpool in the center. That might come into play later in our game. Some icebergs up in the north. And okay, that's a good start. Next, I'm going to go over to tab B and I'm going to further decorate the map. So let's put a bridge down here. Actually, you know what? Let's change that up. Let's put a broken bridge. By putting in that broken bridge, we're kind of giving our player an idea that they're going to have to fix that in order to cross between the two continents. And let's put a nice castle in the north where the king in the north lives there. Maybe a nice little starter town there. That's maybe where our player is going to begin. You know, standard RPG fare. Maybe he wakes up, he overslept or something like that. He's late for his lessons. So that's how most RPG games start. Um, maybe we'll put a nice little tower over there. Maybe it's got something to do with that broken bridge. Who knows? Um, now let's put some stuff in the desert here. Maybe a little oasis town over there. Right by the actual oasis. That makes sense. Oh, can't have an RPG without that big evil volcano. Like that. And let's see what else we can do. Ooh, maybe a little pyramid over there. Maybe that pyramid's got something to do with that game. That looks pretty interesting. Okay, I'm kind of liking where this is heading here. And let's, uh, oh yeah, we need a place for the bad guy. Let's actually extend that a bit more and let's draw the bad castle there. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Uh, maybe a ruined house over in there, a watchtower over there. And you know what? Let's kind of do a, uh, a flying castle, floating castle up there. I don't know what's going on over there. That's something our players are gonna have to uh, gonna have to figure out. Put a big tree over there. Maybe that's where the elves are living. If your game wants to have some elves, a little frozen lake over there. Frozen tree there. Okay, that's, uh, I think actually, I think we need some more details over there in the desert. What else could we put in that desert? Uh, maybe a little nomad's house down there by the forest. Um, yeah, the desert's looking a bit too stark. So maybe we could uh, put a few just little, like, uh, little like, Ayers Rock over there. Or Lurulu. Um, yeah, that's looking a bit better. Okay, there we go. So we've kind of created a storyline here for our player just by looking at the map. So they'll probably start in the village and there'll be some kind of calamity in the world. They'll have to go see the king in the north, you know, go give them a quest to get to the floating island, uh, maybe discover what's haunt this haunted mansion over here. Then they'll find a key to the tower, which will help them fix the broken bridge. They'll go to the village over here, give them a... You know, uh, they'll tell them there's a there's a there's a nomad over there. They're gonna go talk to that nomad. who's gonna send him off to the pyramid, right, to unlock the curse, which will open up the evil dungeon, which will save the world, perhaps. So we've kind of created a story or a tale we're gonna tell through this game. So spend a lot of time in your maps, make them look good, and it'll save you work in the long run. Okay, that's all for today. Next lesson, we'll kind of go over on how to make our first village. We're gonna make this village right here. Okay, we'll make that village for that town. All right, we will see you all later.